So we're here with Professor Aswat the Motor and Professor of Finance at NYU Stern. When you, when Facebook went public, I remember you saying you thought it was overvalued. It went down to 18, then you said it was undervalued and it skyrocketed up to 60 or 70. So you made a pretty good call there. I'm just going to throw out some names and you tell me what you think of their current valuations. Apple. I am, I just sold Apple at 130. So I, I bought it at 60 and it sold it at 130. So I liked it at 60. At 130, I think it's fully priced. I don't think it's overpriced. So if you want to add Apple to your portfolio, just don't expect it to double over the next year. So a quick diversion. I've always heard, or uh, there's a train of thought that you buy stocks and never sell them because of the tax you have tax uh, taxes you have to pay, diminished returns. You trade stocks. I sell because I have to follow the same philosophy that led me to buy stocks in the first place. If I buy something because it looks cheap, yep. then it makes sense for me to sell when it's expensive because yep. if I don't do it, I don't have a philosophy that is actually consistent. Makes sense. Amazon. Amazon is too rich for my taste, and here's why. I love Jeff Bezos. I, I love the vision he has for the company, mm -hmm. but his vision is almost entirely driven by let me dominate the retail business in terms of revenues mm -hmm. and worry about profits afterwards. Mm -hmm. my, by my estimation, the mar Amazon's margins will have to hit about 8 to 9% for it to break even at today's market price. Mm -hmm. I just don't see that as feasible in this retail business with the kind of revenues that Amazon has. So from that margin perspective, I don't like Amazon. I think it's overpriced. Twitter. I think it could be a very valuable company, mm -hmm. but not with its existing management. I wow. think these guys yeah, really Stella don't just, seem to have. Just swallowed his tongue. Uh, I think that these managers don't seem to have a plan to yeah. convert users to revenues. They seem to be hoping that something yeah. good will happen, but that's not a great way to run a company. You're not worried about the flatlining and user growth? I think even if it did, yeah. 10 million users is still a so, lot of users. If so you can, uh, I see Twitter feeds all over the place, right? Yeah. I see them in news stories. I see them in, uh, in links that people send me. So clearly it's ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. A lot of people use Twitter, but they just seem, it, it seems to be difficult for them to figure out a way to convert that, even the existing user base. Forget about the growth in users, the existing user base into revenues. LinkedIn. I like them. I like them as a company. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would add them to my portfolios, but it's one of those companies where I will buy at some point. It will be part of my portfolio mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. So it's one of those companies where I put it on my watch list. I'm lo waiting for a surprise yeah. that pushes the price down 20, 25, 30%, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be jumping in. Nike. Nike is one of those constants. It's been a, co a company that's been in my portfolio for 15 years. It's mm -hmm. one of those companies where it's never massively underpriced. It's mm -hmm. ma never massively overvalued. It's a company that I'm okay with as a long-term investment. About half your portfolio has to be companies that you just buy and just keep as part of your regular investment portfolio. Nike mm -hmm. has been part of that portfolio for a long time. Tesla. Hmm. There are things I love about Tesla. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that it's disrupting a really bad business, the automobile business. Mm -hmm. So it's blessed with its competition. My one concern with Tesla is I don't know what kind of company it is anymore. Mm -hmm. When I first valued Tesla, I valued it as a premium automobile company. Mm -hmm. Today, I might have to value it as a battery company because the real technological advances that te Tesla has made is not in the car side, it's in the battery side. Mm -hmm. So it could be worth a lot as a battery company, but I think I need to see some signs from Tesla as to what kind of company it thinks it is. Because mm -hmm. it seems to go back and forth between being an auto company and a battery company. And until it makes up its mind, I can't really value the company properly. Mm -hmm. So at its existing price, I wouldn't buy Tesla. But as with LinkedIn, it's one of those companies that's on my watch list at the right price. Mm -hmm. I hope to have it in my portfolio. Starbucks. Starbucks. I, I've always been a little more pessimistic than most mm -hmm. people are because I think that their real cost structure is hidden by the fact that they lease all their stores. Mm -hmm. And because of the way we do accounting, they always look more profitable and attractive than they are. Mm -hmm. If you capitalize the leases they have on their stores, it turns out that they're an okay business, mm -hmm. but not an incredibly great business. So to me, it's not worth the downside to add a Starbucks to a portfolio. I think there are far better ways I can play in that particular field. And last one, Alibaba. Alibaba, I like it as a company, mm -hmm. but I don't want the way I describe it is Jack Ma wants my money, mm -hmm. but he don't, doesn't want my input. I don't want to pay five-star hotel prices right. and be put in the outhouse, which is which which is where I'm put 
if I invest in Alibaba. Because of a two-class shareholder system. It's a two-class, yeah. and it's also got this corporate governance system mm -hmm. where the board of directors is appointed by these 19 secretive people who meet together in yeah. Hong Kong. I have no idea who runs the company, and I have absolutely it's no control right. in how it's run. Great. Thanks, Professor. You're welcome.